Hello everyone, it is officially the second week of school, so let's get to it. Before I start talking about what we're doing this week, let me just show you a few weekend highlights of what I did this weekend. Happy Saturday after the first week of school! Yay! I am coming to you right after going to my first Orange Theory class after two weeks. If you don't know, I sprained my ankle about two weeks ago. It was pretty bad. It was the same ankle that I fractured last summer, but it wasn't as bad as last summer. Nothing's fractured, but I just finished my first Orange Theory class, like I mentioned, and it wasn't just a regular class, my friends. It was a 90 minute class. Yesterday, I was so excited about coming back to Orange Theory that I was booking my classes for today, tomorrow, and the rest of next week. And I completely didn't notice that today was a 90 minute class. But I stuck to it and I finished it. It was about 25 minutes in each station the rower, then the weight room, then the treadmill. But my friends, with a couple of exercises on the floor, with strength training being modified, and just power walking through the treadmill at a pace that I was comfortable with, I survived. And it was actually also the first 90 minute class since before the pandemic. So, wow, what a great way to return. And I come back tomorrow, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update and let you know that one, I survived, and two, I feel amazing. As you can probably tell from my voice, I'm losing my voice from all the talking I've done all week and trying to project my voice through a mask. Needless to say, I think I'm going to buy a voice amplifier, but I am stopping by Starbucks where I already stopped because I already have it. And I have a medicine ball, Venti, so warm tea for my throat i think will be great it's now sunday and i'm going back to orange theory yes two days back to back i actually have five sessions to use before september 4th so that's why i went yesterday obviously it was my first time after being out for two weeks i'm going today i'm going tomorrow after school in the afternoon i'm going on tuesday and thursday at 5 15 in the morning so that is what I'm planning for the rest of the week and we'll see how it goes. All right, just finished my one hour workout and I earned 33 splat points. So feeling great. Now to enjoy the rest of my weekend and rest and relax. So I was very happy to be back at Orange Theory and I made sure I had a nice restful weekend focusing on self-care. So this week what I wanted to do for our classroom vlog video is I wanted to only focus on my ELA lessons, so English language arts lessons. So I'm just going to be focusing on how I am teaching reading and writing this week in my classroom. So let's get started by taking a peek at the agenda for today. Today is Monday, August 30th, 2021. So let's see what we planned for today. I am bringing back my agenda because I got my new expo markers. So these are the different things that we focused on in reading this morning. And this was our focus for writing this morning. It all started by working on our weekly language review, which comes from One Stop Teacher Shop. I really enjoy this because it has a variety of skills that go over different grammatical and conventions that I know the students will use, whether they are reading or when they are writing their own writing pieces. So this is what it looks like for this week. So today the students worked on Monday. So they went over nouns, verbs, adverbs, punctuating dialogue, spelling, capitalization, and knowing what a sentence fragment was. I had them look at this vocabulary video on sentence fragments and it was really great. By the end of it, students were able to understand that a sentence fragment is a part of a sentence that does not express a complete thought. So that was a great way to make sure they understood that. Then it was time to revisit our shared read from our Wonders series. This is our shared read is called A World of Change. And this is how it looks like in the student writing companion, but we don't have the books yet. So if the students had the books, they will be able to write on the margins of the passage and make notes on the passage itself. 
So instead of doing that, I created a handout, which I showed last week. I'll show you again. This is what the handout looks like. It has different questions that the students can answer on a post-it and place it right there on top of each of those squares so that they can review the reading standard that we're going over with this particular passage. With this particular text set, we are specifically going over text structure as it relates to compare and contrast text structure. And we're also using our author's perspective as well as main idea summarizing and of course using evidence. One strategy that our district uses whenever we're reading passages is called the SPADE strategy, which is an acronym that stands for this. I wrote it on the board this morning. So we have survey the text. So we're looking at the text features, the title, etc predict so we're using what we survey to help us form a prediction and then we're going to conduct a closed reading by doing analysis plus annotations we dissect the questions before we read and this kind of sets a purpose for reading and we use evidence to support the answer to those questions now today we conducted the second read of the passage and this is what a completed handout looks like so this is my teacher example Again, we started by showing our background knowledge of what we know about natural disasters, and then we made a prediction after we surveyed the text. As we read, students added interesting words, and then we answered questions such as the three natural processes that slowly change the earth, the three ways that people prevent beach erosion, and we look at our signal words for compare and contrast, and how volcanic eruptions can cause a lot of destruction. Before we got here, we went ahead and completed a double bubble, which is a thinking map for compare and contrast. I actually prefer it to the Venn diagram. So in this case, we're comparing slow versus fast changes in this passage. So we wrote how they're the same and how they are different. And then I had the students think about the topic of the passage and use that in the main idea. And then we use the main idea to start our summary. And then we specifically talked about what were slow changes and fast changes to not only complete our summary, but address this other part of this task. So you can see how this one activity involved a lot of different reading strategies to help students really understand the text. Tomorrow, the students are going to read the anchor text, which is a little bit longer of a text, and complete a similar sheet so that they can look for the text features, understand what the passage is about, as well as compare and contrast, in this case, we're actually going to look at earthquakes and tsunamis, which I highlighted in that passage. And we're also going to look at author's perspective because we're looking at a first-hand account compared to a second-hand account because in the passage itself, there is a sidebar, which is an additional text box, that talks about someone's perspective from being in the strongest recorded earthquake in Earth's history, which was the 1960 earthquake in Chile. So they're going to see someone's perspective living through that earthquake. And of course, they're also going to read from a secondhand account to get more information on that earthquake. Lots of embedded strategies in there. And tomorrow, the students will be able to really apply those skills to that passage. And we're going to spend the next two days in that anchor text. And these are the learning goals that the students are working on with this particular reading unit and text set, they can read and understand expository text, they can use text evidence to respond to expository text, and they can know how people respond to natural disasters. Now, as far as writing goes, these are the goals for writing. I can write an argumentative essay. I can synthesize information from three sources. Now, for us, argumentative essay is basically an opinion essay. Today, we started by analyzing the argumentative writing rubric, which is also opinion, looking at purpose, focus, and organization, which the highest score is a four, and evidence and elaboration, which the highest score is a four as well. We were working with these different questions over here, which is why these are highlighted, because this question looks at what are some elaborative techniques. So that would be examples, definitions, and quotations from the sources. We also looked at how we can make a claim and how this is a claim right here that the author is supporting with these two details. And that led us to the student model, which we're going to focus more on tomorrow. So let me show you the activity that I have planned. Since the students don't have their books yet, they will have a copy of the student model so that they can see how the student wrote their essay. 
but we're going to analyze the student model and I created this sheet right here that we can use post-its on as well so that students can engage with that model. They're going to analyze the prompt and they're going to use sticky notes to answer these questions such as what detail from Maria's introduction caught their attention. They're gonna circle the problems people may have after a storm. What is an example of relevant evidence that Maria uses to support her claim in paragraph two? Reread paragraph three, underline the question, how does this technique of elaboration support Maria's claim in paragraph one? They're gonna reread Maria's claim in paragraph one and circle the sentence in paragraph four that restates her claim. And what is an example of a domain-specific vocabulary that Maria uses in paragraph four? Then they're gonna go back to that rubric and discuss why her essay scored a four. And I did include that prompt in the middle. So this is what that sheet looks like once it is printed and it is ready to go for the students. And on the back, they have the writing model. So we're gonna be working with that writing model for the rest of the week, specifically looking at her essay and what made it work and how she supported her claim and obviously was able to elaborate using evidence and elaborative techniques throughout her essay. And then we're also gonna look at the sources that she used to get her evidence to support her claim so that the students can see where the student was able to grab that evidence to support their claim. All of this is going to help students next week write their own opinion essay or argumentative essay to a similar prompt. That one was talking about flood zones. So I'll show you more about that later. But that in a nutshell is what we're doing with ELA this week and what we did today and a little preview of what's to come. So stick around and see how the rest of the week goes with our ELA lessons. Good morning. It is Tuesday and I'm starting my day by going to an Orange Theory session at 5.15 in the morning. I was here yesterday at 5.30 in the afternoon. I forgot to mention that in yesterday's video. But after I left school, I came straight to Orange Theory and did a 5.30 class. And now I'm starting my morning with a 5.15 class. So let's get started. Hello everyone, as you can see, I am now in my classroom and I am coming to you during the only time today that I can come to you because right after school, I have to go and get my car service. But I wanted to go ahead and highlight our reading lessons for today. So let's start by looking at our agenda on the board. So here is our agenda with all of the different things that we have planned for today. We did not get to practice our centers. We just ran out of time and what we did for writing as well. I kept my spade reading strategy on the board because I wanted to talk about it today as well since we were starting to read the anchor text. And overall had really good discussions when we were introducing or actually reviewing author's perspective and text structure. So as you saw, we started with our weekly language review. So I'll show you that, how that looked for today. And again, this is a resource from One Stop Teacher Shop. So here is our Tuesday and uh, the different activities that the students completed and skills that we went over. And then we went ahead and reviewed author's perspective, which we started talking about yesterday. And the students were able to tell me that a perspective is someone's point of view or opinion about a particular topic. So we went ahead and touched upon that as well as asking them what text structure was. And I have to say, at first, no one raised their hand to let me know what text structure is. And this is something that we teachers need to be aware of. Sometimes we're using this terminology and we can't assume that the students already know what that is. So kind of talked about it, told them, hey, I know a lot of you like Roblox and Minecraft. What is a structure? So it's like, oh, a structure is something that you put together, like a building. I'm like, yeah. And piece by piece, we build a building. So think about that, but in what we see in a text. So a text is made up of what? letters, words that form sentences, and then those sentences form paragraphs, and then the paragraphs form the text that we are reading. So I let them know authors do the same thing. They structure those words and sentences into a way that allows us to easily understand the information. So there are different types of text structure, and in this case, since we're looking at informational text, there are different text structures for informational text. And I asked them if they remembered any of them, and they didn't raise their hand, which was a great segue for me to introduce them to the Flowcabulary video on text structures. So this is the video right here. Really great video to get your kids going. It has a great tune. And what you can also do is you can review the vocabulary cards that come with it. 
And at the end, students were able to remember some of the terminology like cause and effect, compare and contrast, problem solution, sequence, and then saw how those tied into text structure. You could also play a vocabulary game to review those, and it's really fun. The vocabulary game, as they get words correct, it adds different instruments at different intervals, and it just creates a whole orchestra of sound. And there's also a read and respond that you can assign your students so that they can practice locating text structure. And of course, a quiz that lets them assess their understanding of text structure and the Lyric Lab, which is where they can actually write a rap or a poem or a rhyme about text structure. And if you haven't used the Lyric Lab, it's a great way to get students to show what they have learned and it adds music and then they can choose a beat at the bottom when they're ready to perform it if they wanna perform it. And as they write lines, they will get some rhyme suggestions so that they have every two lines kind of rhyme. Now, all I did today was only show the video, but I definitely have plans to do some of the other activities later on this week. And again, just making sure they understand that concept. That is our main standard for this week. And they will be assessed on it on Friday through a cold reading passage, a paired reading passage. So once we reviewed that, we were ready to get started on our anchor text earthquakes. So let me give you a closer look at what we looked at. So first and foremost, we looked at the passage only focusing on text features. So we're serving the text. So we looked at the photo, we discussed what we saw, the caption, and then the subheading. And then we kept going through to see even more text features like a map with a caption, a photo with a caption. This is a sidebar because it is a first hand account that's been included here. And then we'll talk tomorrow more as to why the author included that here. And then we see some more subheadings, a diagram with a caption, a photo with a caption and bold highlighted words, another photo with a caption, more subheadings, more bold highlighted words, and so on. This one includes a bulleted list over here as well. So students used all of that observation of the text in order to make their prediction on a new annotated reading sheet that I created for this text. So this is a sheet right here, very similar to A World of Change. It's actually the same format. I just changed the questions and the title and so forth, and I forgot to change this to anchor text. Mistakes have been made, along with the mistake of having the name on two parts. Hey, I'm just trying to get going. <laughs> Sometimes I do these things so quickly that I don't pay attention to this, but at least they have a resource to kind of put their thinking on paper as they interact with the text. So the first question goes over after they predicted, of course, because they wrote their predictions here. It goes over looking at that photo that I just showed you and how it can help us understand what it's like to live through an earthquake. So we went ahead and the students wrote theirs. I wrote mine. They didn't see what I wrote. And then we talked about what evidence from the text helps them understand the photo. Now for that part, we looked at the photo, but we also paid attention to this part of the text right here. And we were able to get a piece of evidence, text evidence from here, that helps us better understand the photo. The students shared a couple of them, including the first two sentences that are right over here. And the last sentence, heat from deep inside the earth moves through the rock and causes it to slowly swirl and flow. Just to help them make a connection between the text features and what the text actually says. That's basically where we paused our reading lesson for there. And then we will continue because we had really great discussions before we even started reading the passage. And tomorrow we'll continue diving in and making sure we read through it all and go into that author's perspective and firsthand and secondhand account and all that jazz. Because this text has a lot of different standards that you can pull from it. And I always like to have the students really talk and discuss what they're learning and how the text and the features in the text help them understand that for deeper meaning. So then it was time for writing. I showed this yesterday. So this is our argumentative or opinion essay analysis sheet because right now we are analyzing the student model. So today we went over the analyzing the prompt routine and here's the prompt and we went ahead and talked about it because it's very important that they understand what the prompt is asking them to do so that they know how to address it. And in this case, so that they know if the student addressed it from the model that we're looking at. So the model is right on the back. And all we did today was read the first introduction paragraph and we discussed what detail 
kind of caught their attention, which is what they included here in this post-it right here. So they needed to include what detail from Maria's introduction caught their attention and put it in quotes because it's a direct quote from the text. And uh, before we did that, we actually talked about what were some of those details that caught their attention as they read that first paragraph. So tomorrow we're gonna continue analyzing her essay and we're gonna circle problems that people may have after a storm, as well as continuing to answer the other tasks that are on this analysis as we take a closer look as to how this student was able to respond to that prompt. So that is all that I have to share with you for our reading ELA lesson, ELA actually, because it's English language arts, for today, Tuesday. So I can't wait to show you what we end up doing tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. It is now Wednesday, September 1st, first day of September, and I'm coming to you during my only break today. So I quickly wanted to show you what is planned or what was planned for our ELA lesson today, and then kind of reflect on a little bit of what happened. <laughs> so this is our agenda for today's ELL block. So again, our weekly reading, reading again our anchor text and going over our standards working on our annotated reading practicing centers and analyzing the student writing model. First, I want to say that we did start the day with our weekly language review. And one of those questions that they had for today was on run on sentences. So of course, some of the students or most of them didn't know what a run on sentence was. So I took to vocabulary. This is the run on sentences vocabulary video that I showed the students and it was very catchy and engaging. The students were able to understand what a run on sentence was and the video also went over the different ways that we can fix run on sentences. So for their weekly language review, they wrote what a run on sentence is. And here it is right here. So the students were able to tell me that a run on sentence is two or more complete sentences missing proper punctuation. So we also went over capitalization, spelling, simple compound and complex sentences, adjectives, future verbs, and of course, possessive nouns. And this is what they'll do tomorrow. So then we went into our anchor text and we actually had to go off our lesson for a moment because we noticed that there was a centipede, a little centipede in the classroom. The kids and I wanted to save it. So we put it in a cup and had some students take it outside. So that happened. Hey, sometimes things like that happen. And when we started reading more about earthquakes, we also went a little bit deeper to help them understand about the whole entire concept of earthquakes and plates and tectonic plates so that they have a better understanding of it since we're talking about natural disasters and how people can respond to them. So we again looked at this part of the text and then we specifically focus on these two pages today since we were learning a little bit more about earthquakes and how they cause and where they form. And after we looked at this and saw again that the text compared, so compare contrast, those plate tectonics to a jigsaw puzzle, we also talked about how some of those pieces sort of look like they, you know, like go together, like an actual puzzle. So of course that brought up the conversation of Pangea and how the plates move. So then we went into the sidebar, which is right here talking about the largest earthquake. We were introduced to Dr. Ines de Fuentes, a seismologist on this page. And then here we have her first hand account of actually experiencing the largest earthquake ever recorded and how that experience actually led her to become a seismologist. So we had a really good discussion about what the author was trying to tell us through this first-hand account and what we learned through Dr. Ines de Fuentes' first-hand account about her experience. And I had them compare that to what the passage was already talking to us about earthquakes, and the students were able to make the connection that with the first-hand account, we're able to have a deeper understanding and kind of experience it through her experience, what it was like to actually live through an earthquake. And at that point, I read the room, the students had done a lot of discussions and talking and conversations, and we were really looking into this, that it was time to have a mindful moment. So I put on calm and we did meditation for a couple of minutes, and then it was time for Spanish. So did we get to complete everything I wanted to complete today in ELA? Nope, definitely not. We didn't get to do these things. And you know what? That is okay. Because I already knew that we had already done enough. And the students needed a break. And 
I'm just trying to be flexible, shape and mold my instruction so that it is the best possible experience for my students while also taking their feelings and their overall energy into consideration. So yeah, tomorrow is another day and tomorrow we'll finish reading our anchor text and we'll read the paired text, which is a short text to compare it and we'll finalize our annotated reading and hopefully practice centers finally, <laughs> which we do start centers next week. So that in a nutshell is what I wanted to tell you about today's reading lessons or ELA lessons. And I will see you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. It is time for another 5.15 workout in the morning, 5.15 a.m. So I am right outside Orange Theory and ready to go in and get my day started. Hello again, as you can see, I am back in my classroom and this morning's workout, it went fine. I mean, I don't think I did as good as Thursday's 5.15 a.m. workout, but I still tried to do my best. It was kind of hard. I guess my body's just tired and a good thing because I am going to take a little break. No back to back workouts for the next four or five days. So that'll be a nice rest for me. And right now I want to let you know what we did during our ELA lessons this morning. So starting off, we completed our weekly language review and we finished reading earthquakes and answered a little bit more on our annotated reading. We didn't get to do our weathering the storm or comparing that to earthquakes or analyzing our student writing model. Hello everyone. Editing Marielle here to tell you that I don't know what happened to my clip that comes after I go over the agenda. I seem to have lost it. So I wanted to explain because the next clip would make better sense. But the reason that we didn't get through all of our agenda was because I asked students what was a first-hand and second-hand account as we were reading more deeply into the sidebar on Dr. Cifuentes' first-hand account of living through the largest recorded earthquake. And the students were not able to really tell me clearly what a first-hand account and a second-hand account was and how they were the same and different. They were able to tell me that a first-hand account was somebody who was there and a second-hand account was someone who wasn't there, but I needed them to understand it better. So I decided to open up my iReady teacher toolbox and show them a lesson that specifically went over first-hand and second-hand accounts along with some passages that will allow them to really understand the differences between the two. This is a teacher toolbox lesson and I basically just went over what it was here and here they had two short brief examples of what a first-hand account is compared to a second-hand account and then I took them to read this The Unsinkable Titanic to discuss whether it was a first-hand or second-hand account so they were able to tell me that it was a second-hand account we read the information and facts that the passage gave us and then we compared it to this other passage which the students immediately noticed that it was a first-hand account. And as we read this passage, we were able to compare how the information on this first-hand account was different from the second-hand account. Doing that, I feel, helped them really understand those two different accounts so that when we went back into earthquakes and talked about Dr. Steve Fuentes' first-hand account of experiencing the strongest earthquake recorded in 1960 in Chile, they were able to pinpoint how her account was a first-hand account and how that account was different from the rest of the selection that just gave you facts and information about the 1960 earthquake without giving you Dr. Cifuentes' experience, thoughts, and emotions as she witnessed those events. So we did spend time on that and then we finished reading the rest of the passage we got to talking about the tsunami portion of the text and of course that brought up conversations on tsunami and because they talked about the tsunami that the 1960 earthquake caused i took them to google earth i basically needed them to see where chile is on the map as it appears on earth and in the passage it explains how the tsunami was traveling at 150 miles per hour and that it reached Hawaii, Alaska, and Australia. And I needed them to see the impact of that. So there's Chile. And as we cross the Pacific Ocean, here's Hawaii. And if you go down here, here's Australia. 
and then up here is Alaska. So once they saw how far that tsunami traveled from down here all the way up to Alaska, up here, right, and Hawaii and Australia, that really helped them picture the powerful force of a tsunami and how devastating it could be. Because another question that we were answering on our annotated reading sheet, which I'll show you right now, was the section titled Tsunami Terror, why that was a good heading for that section. So we had a good conversation about that as well. So here's the progress on our annotated sheet. And here's the question about, you know, how is Dr. Cifuentes' account different from the rest of the selection? And then why the author included her account in there. And here's the question about the title for the section, Tsunami Terror. And we answered it, and we also provided some text evidence that mentioned the tsunami being like a monster and how hundreds of people drown and how it could soak up whole cities. So as you can imagine, that kind of analysis and discussion does take time. And it's something that I really don't want to rush because I want to make sure the students understand the complexity of the text and the information and how all of that connects to helping us form a deeper understanding of the topic. But that in a nutshell was our ELA lesson for today. Tomorrow, we're supposed to take the progress monitoring exam for this text set. And I'm going to make an executive decision to take it next week because I still feel like we need to wrap up earthquakes, read Weathering the Storm, which is a very short passage, compare that, and also talk about text structure, author's perspective, so that they have a better understanding and can hopefully understand the test when they take it next week. Next week, obviously, Monday is a holiday, and Tuesday is a teacher planning day. So our first day together won't be until Wednesday. And because the writing, we haven't been able to analyze it, I'm feeling okay with that. I'm going to be a little flexible with that because for the next two weeks, the students are going to write to an opinion prompt or argumentative prompt on flood zones. So I'm still going to give myself maybe a day or two next week to analyze the student model because it's going to help them know how to start writing their very first essay for this year in fourth grade. So I'm just, you know, trying to see where my students need further understanding. I don't want to rush things because I don't want to create confusion with the students. I want them to really understand so that they do their best. And that's basically it. All right, so I'm going to leave you and I will see you tomorrow. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Friday, September 3rd, 2021. We have officially made it through the end of our second week of school. Yes, I'm coming to you at the end of the school day, and my apologies if my hair looks like a hot mess. I had it in a bun all day, pretty much, and I just put it down because I just wanted to. So I wanted to give you a couple of highlights of our ELA lesson for today and wrap up this week vlog. So let's take a look at our agenda. So here it is. We started with our weekly language review quiz and we completed our annotated reading sheet for earthquakes. We then read the second, which is the paired selection, weathering the storm and compared it to the main selection earthquakes. And because this took a while and I knew I was expecting it, I sort of put this here just in case we had a little bit of time so they could at least get started, but we're definitely moving this for next week. And we did continue analyzing our student model. So I call that a success. So let's go and see what the students actually worked on as it relates to this. So here is the weekly language quiz. As you can see that we're going over possessive nouns, future tense verbs, adverbs and adjectives, conjunctions, simple compound complex sentences, proper spelling, capitalization, and fixing run-on sentences. Then for earthquakes, we finally finished our annotated reading. As you see, we answered our last question, which is how does the text structure of earthquakes impact the meaning of the text? So we had a very extensive discussion on what is the text structure of earthquakes? How do we know that? And how does that help us as a reader understand the text better? So that is how we came up with that answer. So I'm very happy with the answer that the students came up with. And then we went ahead and answered this last question, which was really great to put everything together. So this is our completed annotated sheet. Now, once we completed that, we read the paired text 
And then we did an activity to compare the pair text with the main anchor text, earthquakes, and we did that on Jamboard. So let me show you the pair text first. Here is the pair text. So the anchor text is a nonfiction informational text. This one happens to be a personal narrative. So already off the bat, that is the difference. However, both deal with natural disasters and how people respond to them. This one happens to be about floods. So we specifically talked about this particular text. We also discovered what the point of view was, the author's perspective, and then we took it to Jamboard, like I mentioned. So we did a double bubble. This is one of my templates that I use on Jamboard. I created it myself with a double bubble. I put the title Earthquakes on this, and then I also put a GIF, and then I put Weathering the Storm, and I put another GIF that symbolizes floods, and we went over how both texts are alike. So we put that in the middle with the little sticky notes that come with Jamboard right over here. And then we went over all the differences. So earthquakes, this is how the anchor text is different from the pair text, all of these different differences. And this is how the pair text, weathering the storm, is different from the anchor text. So we had a really, really great discussion about that. After that, we went ahead and continued analyzing the student model for the argumentative or opinion essay that we have been looking at since last week. This is how the analysis sheet looks. So last time I left you, we had already answered this one, which was to share a detail that was interesting or caught our attention from her introduction. We had already analyzed the prompt. And today what we ended up doing is we read the entire essay and we annotated it. So we found out what her claim or opinion was for the entire piece, and we saw what her reasons were for each of her body paragraphs, and then we saw how she restated her claim or opinion in the conclusion and the lasting impression. Now, we went ahead and also circled the problems people may have after a storm, which were right here, no power, no drinking water, a flooded house, and over here her house was destroyed, was another one that we saw. And then we went ahead and answered this question, which was, what is an example of relevant evidence that Maria uses to support her claim in paragraph two? So here is her paragraph two, and her claim is that people decide to stay for different reasons, and the reasons are that sometimes the person is elderly or disabled, they don't have someone to help them leave. Others think their houses are safe because they have survived a hurricane before, and others don't wanna leave their pets behind, and some emergency shelters don't take pets. So those are the relevant evidence that we added here so next week we will continue with this we started reading this one we started looking at her question here that's why we underlined it and then we compared it to her claim and we started talking about it but it was time for us to go to spanish so we will continue doing the rest of it next week all in all it was a really great discussion and this is gonna like i mentioned earlier this week is going to help them understand how they should write their argumentative essay when we start doing it if not next week, the week after. So now it's time for me to go home and have a nice four day weekend. But before that, let me show you my lesson plans for next week. So here are my ELA lesson plans for next week. So we are only teaching Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And these are my math, social studies, and science lesson plans for next week. And I also placed everything in checklists in my Google Keep so that everything is ready to go for lessons for next week. All right, that is all that I have to share with you for this week. I hope you enjoyed coming along by only focusing on our ELA lessons for the week. And I hope you got some great ideas on how to teach text structure, informational text, some activities that you can do with your students. Maybe the annotated reading sheet was a great strategy that you could probably incorporate into your reading assignments. And the way that we're analyzing the text, maybe that springs up an idea for you as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.